Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 45 of the Own the Moment podcast. My name is TJ Lasig. I'm one of the co-founders here at OTM, and I am back after a week off for another edition of the Weekly Recap Podcast. And man, was it a busy week in the Top Shot world, but especially here at OTM, we've got a lot going on, and I'm going to try and quickly break down everything that happened here so that we are all up to speed and on the same page heading into the weekend. So this week at OTM, we had Library on the show Monday night. We talked a bit about the state of Top Shot at the moment. We talked about the recent momentum that we've seen and the MGLE premium pack drop that happened on Monday. Wednesday, Justin and I did a little bit more of a, of a fun show. We talked again about the MGLE pack drop, some of the market movement that we've seen since those packs came out on Monday. We ran some giveaways, and then we had Producer Coop join us at the end of the screen, stream, open up his MGLE pack where he was fortunate enough to rip a number six cereal of the Darius Garland MGLE. So always a good time when we're able to get Producer Coop in front of the camera. And then we ended up having an unexpected emergency podcast that we recorded Thursday morning where Jacob from Dapper Labs joined us, and we talked through all of the changes that the Dapper team has made to the collector score, specifically the three bonuses that they rolled out yesterday evening. So I will kind of recap all of that and touch on all of that today. But first, I'm going to talk some OTM with all of you because, as I said, it's been a, a busy week here at Own the Moment. And let me go ahead and, and talk through everything that we have going on because why not? So the first thing that I want to share that we shared on Monday is that we are, are very fortunate to be a part of the Techstar Sports Accelerator Program, which is going to be taking place over the course of the next three months. So I personally will be spending the majority of my summer in Indianapolis as a part of this program. There are 11 startup programs, sorry, startup companies that are taking place in this. And really what it is, it's an incubator type thing. They provide us with a ton of mentorship a ton of different contacts within their network that is going to, to help us take Own the Moment to the next level here. So really, really excited for that opportunity. Shout out to the Techstars team and everyone involved there. And, you know, as I said on Monday, I, I am happy to announce that this is now my full-time gig. So I am going to be operating as the CEO of Own the Moment, have quit my full-time corporate job after working there for nine years, had a combination of, of two kind of big corporations in Capital One and GSK. So really pumped for this opportunity and pumped to, uh, as I'm about to announce in a little bit, start building out a team here at OTM. Uh, the other other thing that we announced this week is, is our series of investors that have joined us along this journey. So shout out to everyone on the list here. Uh, we've got the the Dapper Labs team involved through their like VC arm, Baller Ventures. We, of course, have tech stars. We've got the legend himself, Dingaling, some of the, the club Top Shot Faithful, and Michael Levy and Jack Settleman, a couple of the folks over from Establish the Run, Adam Levitan, Andrew Wiggins, not the NBA Andrew Wiggins, but the Establish the Run Andrew Wiggins, just as cool guys. Taylor Cabey, CEO of Ready TO, Mike, Michael Leone. And then rounded out by, by Michael DiLorenzo and Jared Schwartz. So really, again, excited to have all of these folks involved and help us get to the next level. And getting to the next level does, of course, involve hiring. So we are officially hiring for a senior software engineer. This is posted across LinkedIn, Angel. I'm trying to get it posted on Indeed. It's not up there quite yet. We're going to be making a tweet about this later today. So for anyone that is interested or knows anyone that may be interested, got an, an awesome team over here at On The Moment. This is going to be our first official hire. So super, super important role within the team going to help us build out a ton of the awesome features that we have sitting in the backlog right now. We teased a little bit of what we have going on behind the scenes on Wednesday, where hopefully sometime this week we will be releasing the ability to actually log in at otmnft.com, have a profile, select your favorite moments so that you can kind of have a, a personalized screen where you get to see all of the, the moments that you care about the most and track those as you please. So 
And man, whew, we've got we've got a million ideas. We've got a, a ton of what I think to be super innovative thoughts here. And we need your guys' help to build this out. So shoot me a DM on Twitter, reach out to me on Discord if you're interested or know anyone that may be interested. And uh, yeah, let's let's get this thing going. All right. Shout out to OTM. Let's see. What do I have next? Sorry, I'm trying to. There we go. All right. Collector score bonuses. Actually, no. Let's do hollow icon drop details first. Okay. Hollow icon drop going to be taking place next week, next Thursday, June 17th, 5 p.m. Eastern time. The cost is going to be $230, which is an absolute steal. So just as they did with the MGLE pack on Monday, we are going to have the throwback cost of 230. If you recall, the most recent legendary packs have cost $999. So getting a, a significant discount here, there's going to be 2,500 packs up for grabs. And in order to be eligible, you will need a collector score of 7,500. And that 7,500 collector score, the snapshot is going to be taken at noon next Thursday. So you have up until five hours before the drop to adjust accordingly and make sure that you are eligible if that is something that you're interested in. And then for those of us that are not able to get a pack, rebound packs will of course be available again. So yeah, I mean, I think a lot to unpack here. Obviously the headliner is the collector score of 7,500. That's a pretty substantial number, but we now have some easier ways to go about getting to that collector score. And so specifically, there are three new bonuses that the Dapper team is now implementing. This is what we discussed in depth with Jacob on our podcast yesterday. So highly recommend checking that out if you have not already. And I'm going to walk through the bonuses here. I also may pull up the blog directly. If you haven't read the blog, go check that out. Dives into a ton more detail. There's actually some other like little nuances beyond these three bonuses, but these are the the main three that are going to be the most influential. So the first one is the set completion bonus. So you get two times the points towards your collector score bonus if you complete an entire set. And th this is a cool concept because it rewards further the sets that are, are more difficult to complete or that there are more moments needed to complete, right? So you have the gift, which has what, six moments, and then you have obviously sets with, with much more than that. And so what will happen is that if you own the entire set, you will get double the points for each of the moments in that set, and that will count towards your collector score. And the next one is a series team bonus. So here you get a half of a point bonus if you own at least one moment from each player on a team in a given series. So if I own all of the 76ers, each player that has a 76ers moment in series two, if I own each of those, I'll get a 0.5x multiplier on each of those moments that will count towards my collector score. And then the last one is the full team bonus. So it kind of compounds on that series team bonus a bit. And this is that you get a, a 2.5x points if you own at least one moment from each player to be featured on a team ever. So whereas the first one is if I have all of the series two 76ers, this next one would be if I have a player from every 76ers moment that has every player that has ever had a 76ers moment on top shot. And so th there's a little bit of a duplication factor there that it seems like there's not 100% clarity there, but it, it does seem like, you know, if, if you have, if you get the full team bonus, then you, you essentially have the series team bonus by default because you obviously need to own all of the series two or whatever moments in order to, to have the full team bonus. But like also, if you own all of those moments, then you're, you're probably not really grinding the collector score. You, you probably have a 7,500 well, well underway there. So a couple of my thoughts here. I love it. I love it. I think that it's good for a few reasons. Number one, I, I think that the, the team bonus concept is cool. I think that, you know, we always hear about being a collector and part of being a collector is showing that fandom of what your favorite team is. And I like that they are now rewarding people of, hey, you know, if I'm a, like I said, big Sixers fan and I am actively collecting from the Sixers, I get a little bit of a reward, a little bit of a bonus there. So I think that's a cool aspect. Obviously, you know, the, the analytical folks are maybe going to take a look at this 
not just from a, oh, I'm going to collect my favorite team perspective, but from, okay, I'm just going to find which teams are the cheapest to collect. We're actually going to talk a little bit about the analysis that we posted out on Twitter yesterday in terms of like how we can quote unquote take advantage of this and maximize our opportunity for people that are maybe looking to up that collector score. But I, I think in general, adding to the team fandom aspect is going to be something that we continue to see and that this is only going to be the first of many iterations where people will get rewarded for being, you know, showing that, that they love a certain team. The other thing that I, I, I really like about this is that it's so diversified in terms of the number of ways that you can now impact your collector score. One of the big problems that we see with the challenges is that when you complete a challenge after the utility is no longer needed for those moments in the challenge, as we've always seen, boom, steep drop as soon as the challenge ends because there's a concentrated number of moments that have the utility. When we get bonuses like this, there's such a wide range of ways to go about it that we're not going to see that concentrated spikes and dips right? I think it's going to be more spread out. And so we'll see, and what we're actually going to see in the next slide, increases across multiple different paths as people choose what's best for them in order to get their collector score up. So I think that this will kind of create some longer term value as opposed to these quick spikes and quick dips. And I think the more variety in these types of bonuses, the more variety in the ways that you, we are able to get utility from our moments, it just will, again, continue that more steady growth upward as opposed to the, the peaks and the valleys. And what I'm talking about with this, so here was the analysis that we put out on the Twitterverse yesterday. I will also call out that, that we realized there was a mistake here in the Throwdown Series 2. So the, the wrong price was used for Throwdown Series 2. Throwdown Series 2 would actually be towards the top in terms of the, the cost to complete, the cost per point, um, right up there with the hustle and show. However, you know, Throwdowns is, is much more expensive. I think it's going for around 5200 or so. But wanted to call that out. And we haven't seen the price movement there as much. So just if anyone is interested in the Throwdowns, that's something to check out. But what we took a look at here is adding up all of the, the moments from within each set, taking a look at how many potential bonus points there were up for sale, and then what would be the price to accomplish those. So you can see right there, Hustle and Show providing the highest leverage just by the fact that it's cheap and that there are a number of moments that exist in it. Uh, and then, you know, we also keep in mind, right, the Cool Cats... The Cool Cats thing is still in play here. If you own the full Cool Cats set, you get a free pass into the hollow icon drop. So shout out to people like me and all the members of the hashtag NLL because we, we are just sliding right on in to the queue for the hollow icon. Yeah, and so then, you know, we also have some much, much deeper analysis from the Herzig bot himself that was posted in the Mission Control Center in the OTM Discord, where he breaks down each of the teams, each of the individual players. One thing that I will call out and that I saw some people reference on Twitter, where, and they are correct, is that the still the quote unquote cheapest way to up your collector score is just to buy the floor, right? Buy a bunch of $3 moments. That's the cheapest way to, to up your collector score. But what I will call out is, is just what I said before, right? To me, that's, that's a potentially riskier one and maybe a, a bit of a shorter sighted strategy. If we're just buying the floor and it's moments that you know are not great moments, junk moments, after this collector score thing is done, maybe they go back down, right? And so to me, going for something like the hustle and show, getting a complete set out of it, it's a little bit more of a of a stable longer term view at it that also <clears throat> achieves your short term goal. So just just wanted to th throw that out there. There, I mean, we got to think not just about okay, how do I get eligible for the hollow icon drop? Because also be honest, just because you're eligible for the drop doesn't mean you're going to get a pack. I mean, there's 2,500 packs. I got to imagine 
with this coming out so early and with the variety of ways that you can get to that 7,500, that we'll probably see a, a good number. I don't know. I think we've been talking internally of, you know, between 10,000 and 15,000 people that become eligible when it's all said and done. So you're looking at a, a 20% or, or less chance of getting a pack. So just think about that. Keep that in mind. Don't be overly short-sighted in your thought process when it comes to, you know, just, just collect moments that you like and that you see some potential long-term value in and not just what's going to get me eligible for this one specific pack drop because there's going to be many more pack drops to come. And the, the final thing that I will say, and we, we did mention this in the Discord, as we said, we have some deeper analysis there. So if you want to join the Discord, you can click on the link at the bottom of this video. But also want to be transparent in that we are looking into ways to put some of this content behind a paywall. So just want to, to throw that out there. Um, it, it's, you know, it, it's the fact of the matter. It is what it is. I think that we have some members of the community that, that have actually asked us for that because now there will be less people having access to this information. But uh, I, I can also assure you that if and when we do put things behind the paywall that we're going to feel very strongly that, that it's valuable and that it's worth paying for. So just wanted to, to throw that out there. You know, I gotta, I think as Justin said in Discord, gotta put, put dinner on the table for myself still here now, this is the full-time gig. But our, our number one priority is always going to be making sure that we are doing right by the community. And I think that's really it when it comes to, to this week. It was a wild journey in terms of what we have going on at OTM. And then also with these collector score updates, I think significant changes coming down the pipe. And I'm just going to very quickly run through my top takeaways and my TJ's tilt because, you know, that's what we do on this show. Top three takeaways. Number one. Working at a startup is is pretty awesome. I mean, I've been, like I said, working in corporate America for nine years, and the startup life is just so much different, so much more fast paced. Uh, you can kind of directly see the work that you're putting in, getting value to your customers in a, a short time frame. So, shout out to startup life. Highly recommend it to, to anyone that's ever kind of considered it but hasn't taken the leap. Uh, I think it's it's much much worth it. And I've learned so, so much over the last couple of weeks. And even just in this week itself, going and jumping in full time, it's been even another level and looking forward to continuing to, to personally learn and personally grow as I embark on this journey. And like I said, we are hiring. So if you're interested in the startup life and you want to work with people like myself, people like Justin, people like Neil, producer Coop, Bach, hit us up. Number two, Indies, Indianapolis is low key, low key, solid city. Went to the Indy 500 the other weekend, as we said. That was fun. But it's kind of cool. There's a lot to do. A lot going on. People are pretty cool. So check it out sometime. I mean, I'm not going to like highly, highly recommend it. But it's low-key solid. I'd put it on the, the to-do list. It, it's exceeded my expectations so far. And then number three, I feel like I say this all the time. And I'm not trying to be like a Dapper Lab stand by any means. But I do think that they continue to do the right things. I do think that they really want to, to do right by the customers. I think they continue are trying to, to come up with different innovative ways to make sure that the, the folks that were, you know, maybe didn't have the best experience in the post-February dip, uh, I think we're, we're heading in the right direction and we're starting to see that upward market trajectory as a result. TJ's tilt of the week. I mean, this isn't even really a tilt and I talked about it on the Wednesday show, but like I almost got hit by a car on Wednesday. I was cruising around on my bird scooter and I wasn't really paying attention, to be honest. I was trying to rush back for the podcast, looking around, enjoying the views, had my AirPods in, I was coming up to this like five way intersection. And you know, when you're a kid, they always tell you to look both ways when you're crossing the street. And I did not look both ways before crossing the street on my scooter and I had to slam on the brakes before I got hit by a car, but I'm good. I'm all safe. The person in the car was not happy with me. They yelled at me. I apologized. I said, yes, I did not want to do that. I didn't want to get hit by a car. That would not be my choice. If given the choice between getting hit by a car and not getting hit by a car, I will choose not to. But uh, not really a tilt, but just like, hey, grateful to be alive kind of vibes. You know what I'm saying, people? All right. I think that will do it for this Friday evening. 
well, Friday morning. It's 7.30 in the morning. It is not evening at all. Anyways, going to be heading to heading to the uh, a little family wedding this weekend. So a little, little R&R for your guy over here. Get some relaxation. Ready to hit back on the grind on Monday. So for Justin, for Producer Coop, I am TJ Lasig, and we will see you guys next time.